today I woke up and I felt great. And then randomly I got tired. And right now I'm kind of tired. So I imagine I'll just be kind of weak, I guess, all day. Yeah. Well, but, you uh, had a good stream good. yesterday, though, too. Just like. Chill. I didn't do anything. Never yeah. <laughs> That's what being a big streamer is like, I guess. <laughs> Dude, jack shit. Hello again, welcome to After Metagame. With, uh, here I am with my three favorite uh, smashers, the kid, the goat, and the buster all in one singular human being known as Mango. Uh, thanks for being here, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, just so everyone knows, we did this once, and Travis had shitty internet, so now we're doing it again. Yeah, so Hopefully this time it goes better. This is uh, I'm going to blame it on my 2013 iMac. So um, this, uh, this time, and I, I was able to sur uh, keep some of that original interview, so you will see some of it. Um, so I have two shirts, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Two different Mangoes, okay. <laughs> Uh, but I figure we'll just start where we did last time, and uh, you know we've we've run through this a little bit already. But um, just sort of uh, kind of, I'd love to hear your um, reactions to metagame, sort of what you liked, what you didn't like, and then uh, I guess we can just go from there. Um, so I, I think in the moment of metagame, looking back, I think a lot of people were a little harsh on it, myself included, and I think it's because uh, in the moment, I think people are a little uh, there's more feelings going on and. Blah, blah, blah. But I think looking back on it, um, and I've seen some of it here and there. I've watched a few parts. And uh, I also think there was, a, I think it hit really high highs that, like, there was moments that were so good, like, gave me the chills. Like, I was like, this is really good. And then there was moments that I felt like were kind of off, missed a mark, or, like, misrepresented somebody in some way, or somebody didn't like this, that, that. I think there was a lot of that. But, um, there was definitely lows. There was highs, like, for sure. And I think most people would probably agree with that sure yeah i think um I, I do remember like in the moment it was it was it sort of reminded me a little bit of what the when the original smash documentary came out where it was like you know a lot of rah-rah stuff and uh, especially for you i think you had a um, you know you were digging it until uh it kind of got into some stuff that um you know because we we did our interview first uh and then i kind of went and talked to pp and armada so a lot of the stuff that you know I talked with them, you didn't get a chance to respond to, and it, there wasn't enough context on certain things. Um, yeah. I guess one of the things that stuck out to me, and I think that you need to or, or wanted to talk about, was uh, you and PP, because um, that that was definitely there was there was a lot of um, truth to the way that it was portrayed, but it didn't kind of show uh, everything. Um, I mean, I think there was a lot of truth, I, like for sure, like. It just it got Kevin's side, which was right. fine, but like I didn't, I, I think, cause like so I was saying um the other day randomly uh so like I feel like it was portrayed right, like I was a little fucker to Kevin, but like we <laughs> talk, I think I think me and Kevin talk like we would talk like every day at one point like that. Yeah, that was that was my guy, you know. So I like, um, I think the part like the portrayed part where like I'm just kind of being a little fucker. I think that's like accurate. Cause that's and this is like 21, 20 year old Mango, and twenty year old Mango was, although he was a sweetheart, was misunderstood in moments. <laughs> I think like he never meant bad, but he was just. I always say he was just a little hot shot. Like looking back, it's like, I was the best melee player in the world. Like, like when I was 17, 18. Like I won pound three in high school. So like. I was always just a little hot shot. It's like, well, we could just play me. I had something that like I was just better than everyone else at. Yeah. At a young age, which I think, uh, you know, can alter and make someone, uh, you know, a little fuck face, which is definitely <laughs> me. But like, I always meant well. Like, I was never like malicious or anything. And I think that was portrayed really well. And I think you know I have no problem with that. But um, it, like there was moments where Kevin was like, you know, this happened or like make like I think there was one Genesis moment where like I went up to Kevin and like I made fun of him. It was um because he got sick and I knew he was sick. Yeah. So like I went up to him to make fun of him to knowing I thought that he knew that I knew that like I knew he felt like shit. So I was like I'm gonna try and joke it off. And then in the moment he like like chuckled or whatever. But like I didn't even think that like you know he was upset about it. And then this comes out and he was like he didn't really like that. And I was like you know obviously that's my bad. But my intention like wasn't to make fun of him. But in the moment I can see that. But I was just trying to like make a joke to like ease it. Stuff like that I think was uh not portrayed obviously and obviously like i didn't even know like he was going through like all right the, like all his, all the stuff that he was going through when we were talking there was he never once been like hey man i'm having a rough day or anything we just always talked about melee i made fun of him i linked him music so like that was news to me 
So when it comes down to Doc, like, I, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, fuck. I, yeah, that's fucked up. But it was also, um, I think you did a good job of uh, the part where it's Norwalk hanging out. I think that part, like, says it all. Like, it's just, we're all shitting on each other. Like, right. on each other. And I think, like, I, because, you know, I'm fucking 20 years old, 21. I assume that's how everyone was raised. And, like, because that's where I'm from, Norwalk. Like, we were all, you know, shit the shit with each other. Like, you had to be able to make fun of each other. That's just kind of how it went. And, you know, when I'm 20, I don't, I forget that other people, someone, Kevin, you know, from fucking North Carolina, just <laughs> as opposite as from Norwalk as can be, that, like, yeah. I used to just make fun of them. And uh, I thought nothing of it. I thought everyone was like that, right? Like, in the, at the time, I'm just, you know, stupid. And I'm just like, okay, if, you know, if Al- I can call Alex this, why can't I call Kevin this, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so, like, I, I treated him like he was Norwalk. And that's, like, how I treat my good friends. Right. But obviously, you know, not everyone's hashed out to, uh, to handle that, right? And as I got older, I realized that, like, I will try not to make fun of people, you know, if I know they're, like, I don't want to say soft. They're just, they didn't grow up the way we did so like, you know i know now i'm better at reading it i'm like okay like he, this guy doesn't like it right so right. i just kind of keep it with my friends so um i think that you putting that part in the doc is also like it's like yeah this is how we were like none of us are all mean we're all having a great time you know yeah so like i think with kevin i always just assume that and then you know years later i find out he's like you know battling this he's got the stuff going on with his parents it's like well fuck i i, I, I didn't know any of that i'm like that right sucks. So, yeah. yeah i think um I think the way we were portrayed was totally fine. I think that was our relationship. You know, that was me and Kevin. That's how we were. So I think that was actually portrayed really well. Uh, only thing is, like, most people just, it just makes me look like I'm just being a dick for no reason, <laughs> which is not the case. And I, I think even Kevin would be like, yeah, you know, looking back on it, I don't think he'd be like, Manga was mean on purpose. Cause yeah, I, I, I was always nice to him. And at the end of the day, you know, like, we used to play friendlies all the time. And in that time, like, I always say, um, in Melee, like, you can just be homies with somebody if you play melee with them. So like anybody right. I play melee with today, like we don't have to talk, but if you're playing melee together, you're communicating through the game, which is, you know, kind of corny to say, but uh, it's definitely true. Like if I play friendlies with, you know, you for two hours, I feel like at the end of the time, we'll just like know a lot about each other. Like, yeah. We'll have little moments. You'll like do something cool. Like, oh, sick. Or like, you'll die funny and I'll laugh. You'll laugh. Like there's <laughs> a lot of communication that goes on. So like me and Kevin, that's how me and Kevin pretty much like, came up like we would play like two three hours of friendly and there'd be a lot of banner while banter while we're playing and um that's just kind of how like we got to where we were and then i messaged him one day because you know i was like oh because i played him and i'm like this guy's pretty good i'm like he works on a few things and you know at the time i call him lame (laughs) and you know other words i won't repeat (laughs) it was uh you know i used to give him shit and i don't i don't think he liked that very much but i i do think that uh me making fun of him and like pestering him and just being annoying to the way he to him that i think that it, it made him the player he was like i'm not trying to take full credit no totally I, I do think there was a fire under his ass because like you do have like 20 year old mango just being a little fuck to you like <laughs> and i would just make fun of him and like make fun of him make fun of him and i i, I think it motivated him in a way like and i i think he'd agree to an extent i'm not gonna take full credit but we used to talk about melee i'd make fun of him and i i think he would like even in friendlies we'd be playing and i win five games in a row like you get fucked up, Kevin. He, you know, <laughs> Kevin is such a tryhard nerd. He'd be like, and he would like sit up and be like, all right. And then you know he would try so fucking hard in this one friend. Yeah. And then he would do a lot better. And I was like, all right, now we're you know we're getting. That. And that was just kind of our relationship. I think it was just big brother, little brother. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I felt like you know, and I got this from when I was talking to him that he really, really sort of looked at you know your his relationship with you as something that was really formative and like really sort of important to him. Even if you know, th- and that's the thing. It's like as you said, you guys came from such different backgrounds. A wonderful aspect of the game that like brings people together that mm-hmm. otherwise won't speak the same language, and you're you're thrown in together and you're learning from each other. And that was what was really special to me about like learning or hearing about you know um how he related to you and uh, what he learned from you so um and he said when i talked to him again about metagame he said you know that you know i I really want to make it clear that that was like such an important relationship for me um no we were like little best buds yeah me and kevin were boys and then you know he vanished and we kind of stopped talking but we kind of briefly talked i think if me and kevin we could you know it's funny i think if we actually started talking again um i think it would be the same exact same relationship <laughs> but just uh we're just older now i would still give him shit i would treat him the exact same 
but the you know nicer adult version but i would, yeah. I would still fuck with them and then he would do you know uh, the kevin i always called the kevin like i would say something he'd always go yeah 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 that was always <laughs> what he would say to me yeah yeah i'd make fun of him he'd be like yeah 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 and he'd like roll his <laughs> eyes yeah i think he would still do something like that but he'd yeah be like, all right all right like that, i know exactly how our i think we would have like the same conversations just you know, a decade apart, but they would be, I think they'd be the exact same. And I can't imagine our relationship being anything else. Yeah. That's the thing too. It's like it, in the, in the period of time covered in the documentary, you guys are all fucking like young kids, like almost like learning yeah, how to be adults. So it, I don't know when people come down on you for like whatever about, you know, like, I, I didn't like the people were giving you shit about um, one thing or another when the, the doc came out. It's like, you, have you ever been a teenager or a young adult? Oh. Like, yeah, no, I actually tweeted, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that, like, all of your relationships from, like, you were 20, or you saying this, or you being right. a fuck, I'm like, I'm like, we're all little fucks when we're 20, like, yeah. you know, in one way or another, and I'm like, oh, like, everyone's being harsh on me, I'm like, bro, you're lucky no one, you know, recorded you when you were 20, I'm sure you were <laughs> dumb, stupid shit, too, you know, except us, we're just peaceful, you know, we're just playing melee, being little fucks to each other, right. like, that was just kind of the extent of it. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, think, I think it's kind of harsh when people, like, judge us, like, especially things that were, like, a decade ago, like, it's just like, well, you know, we just happen to be filmed. Like, I think in metagame, we're, I think I was 21, 22 in the recordings, like when the interview. And then I think, you know, with Kevin, like in pound four, I was, and that was about that era. Genesis, I was, uh, pound four was in 2010 and I graduated high school in 2010. So I was 18. So, I mean, yeah. I'm just, a, I'm just a little, a little kid, you know, dude. I, yeah, no, no, but I have, you know, all this spotlight on me and, uh, you know, it's just kind of how you dealt with it. So I, I think that's uh, the beauty of Melee is like a lot of us grew up with each other and now we're fucking old men and, you know, a lot of us still play. And it's like, I always, well, a little side topic, but I always say I'm like the last of the Mohicans because like, yeah. like, you know, Mute King's still around, you know, Hbox, they're still around, PP, you know, whatever. And um, I feel like when I play like Zane, like I always feel like, the cool thing about Melee is I have so much history. So, like, I always say, like, I'm the only person who's, like, you know, beaten Ken and beaten, like, Zane right now. That's true. And, like, no, no, and I always say, like, that's really cool. Like, I, and not to hype myself up, but just because I'm the last one. Like, I have been there. I, I think I call myself the second wave. There's, like, the original wave, the MOG guys. I, call, I That's, like, the first wave. You can go a little before that, but those guys are, like, we weren't even as established. So, I always right. felt, like, the MOG, that era was, like, you know what's done in the the first doc that yeah. era is like that's like the that's like fr first era and then i came like only because when mog was around i was literally like 11 years old so like even then there's i couldn't even have, it's not possible for me to make it so i always i'm like the second little wave after and then i always say like it's cool like when i play zane it's just like history you know there's so much history that goes into a set it's like fucking a dude and i think that's really cool about melee is like we're one of the only games that can say that yeah for sure well, especially true for me. I mean, I, it's so funny, like, seeing people reacting to Metagame. And some people were saying, like, oh, man, uh, Sandbox must really hate Mango. And it's like, man, like, one of the main reasons I wanted to make these documentaries was because of your, your play and, like, and the fact that you do span all these different uh, eras. And I think a lot of Metagame, for me, I think it was it's like a personal thing that I wanted to show to you guys and be like, hey, remember this amazing story, the, this era of the five gods, remember this whole time? And I think I forget sometimes that there's a wide world of people that come in and have no context for certain things um, that just, you know, skips my yeah, mind. No, I, I think, um, I, I mean, even for me, even like when I stream, I, I just assume everyone knows how I am at this right. point, but that's never the case. There's thousands, millions, quadrillions of people and how many people saw Metagame for the first time who had no idea who I was? Right. The first time. And I think that's why I always get the short end of the stick on, on that kind of thing. And it's funny, like, the same example, like, I'll randomly tell my stream once a month, I'll say something really fucking, like, mean or, like, funny yeah. or something. And I'm like, what if someone, that was, like, the first thing that, they, like, they were just watching the stream for the first time and they know nothing else about me. And I'm like, I think that's why people can get, like, really bad impressions of me. Yeah. But well, even, um... In the you know meta game, I in the moment I thought I looked really bad, but towards the end I think it got there. Oh man, like um, you you had one of my favorite moments at the end in episode six. I know I talked about this last time, but like when you're talking about you know how you feel, you know you're, you're talking to Hiko at, at the Big House Four about you know I'm going to become a big streamer and stuff. 
like for me, it drove home. There was sort of like a, it felt like the Pantheon was sort of ending at that point. Like, you know, HBox was going to go to chemical engineering. You know, M2K was playing a bunch of different games. Like you were, the, the idea that you might be thinking about becoming a streamer and never playing Melee again, like I, it really felt like a sad moment. Uh, and there was a, you, you kind of wipe away a tear when you're talking to me, like, you know, I'll never do that. I'll never walk away. I'll always take the hard road. And that always got me. Like, I think you definitely had like some of my favorite parts of the doc. I have a lot of like, because I think like um, PB's parts kind of all sad, but I think that's what makes his win so good. So like PB's arc is like him struggling, which I thought was really cool. It ends with him winning. I personally hate Apex 2015, but <laughs> I do think it's a good endpoint because uh, that was kind of was like the it was like a it was like uh it was like the final day of high school kind of it was like this is I think the last time you know the ending of Greece right right it was it was kind of like. You know, this is the last time we'll probably all be together. And I think looking back, I can't remember the last time Kevin was like in tip top shape and everyone yeah. was playing like Kevin entered some stuff, you know, Genesis Evo, but he, he, you know, he was just there, I think to make everyone happy. I don't think he was like practicing as hard. So like, I always, then he, that's why I think Apex 2015 was like the last time everyone was together, like truly. So I, I do think that's a really good ending point for sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have some really cool parts. I mean, when I just talk about, like, loving Melee, I think, and I'm still here. It's not even like it's a lie. Like, you know, I really do love the game. So that part was cool. I'm like, I look badass. I just look like this little fuck who loves the game. <laughs> it's true. Like, I mean, I've been playing Melee since I was, like, tournament-wise, since I was, like, 13 or 14. And, like, I'm 29. And I'm probably, I'm, well, I tell everybody, obviously, and everyone watches my stream, but I'm playing until I'm 35, and then I'm done. Yeah. I'm letting everyone know right now that my last year, 35, that's my last year. And then, because by then, that's over 20 years in the game. That's crazy. That's and crazy. I'm, and then everyone's like, don't retire. I'm like, go suck a dick. <laughs> you got to you gotta let me you gotta let me go at some point. So <laughs> I got six more years of Melee, and then I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Maybe sooner if I, like, I always say if I start sucking, I don't want to just show up to tournaments and, like, I'm getting, like, 32nd place or like ninth place i'm not even qualifying it's like yeah I i'm going out i'm i just just let me go like i'm just embarrassing myself <laughs> as long as as long as i'm a contender I'll, I'll you'll i'll be here i'll be here for the next six years uh of course it crashes right in the middle of that shit oh well i guess i would want to i wanted to pick it up um sort of where oh the question about motivation because you you touched on it a little bit and this this was something that um you know, PP, do you agree with the way that like um, Kevin saw it at, at pound four, where he could he, the way he describes it in your episode is sort of like you you were so much better than him that you really wanted more out of him. But does that ring true for you? Um, yeah, pound four. That was the one I won, right? Yeah, you. That was when you jiggly did a H box at the end. Yeah, yeah, because we played Kevin and like we were like starting to be buddies and. Um... I was like force stalking him. I don't remember exactly because that was fuck over a decade ago, but I remember I was I was shitting on him in those friendlies. I'm pretty <laughs> sure, I, but I think uh, and I remember just because uh, I knew he could be good, and I saw something in Kevin just because the way he handled losing, and even when he would lose to me, uh, I could tell he didn't like it. Most people back in the day when they would lose to me were very, uh, people just accepted it back in the day. Like if you lost to me, like. Of course, if we play friendlies, you're going to lose, like, 99% of the matches. Yeah. But, like, Kevin, I could tell, like, would still get mad. And then, you know, I would shit on him. And I could tell, like, it would spark something in him. And yeah. I was like, um, I think I've always been good at, like, telling. And, like, I even called it with Zane. Like, I remember I played Zane, and I was just like, I, there's somewhere I go, this guy's going to be a problem. <laughs> and I feel, like, uh, I feel like I got that with Kevin playing a bunch. Like, just the way he handled losing, even though he was a salty little fuck. Um, every time we did play, I could tell he was getting better. And then, you know, I would just keep shitting on him. And I, I don't know if he'll say it, but I, I, it might have motivated him a little bit. I think, you know, when you have Mango, especially this is little kid Mango. Yeah. Just shitting on you. Like, it, I was such a little fuck. So <laughs> I can only imagine, like, being like, oh, my God, I want to beat this guy so bad. Yeah. So it might have lit a fire under his ass. We'll, yeah. we'll have to yeah. wait and see what he says. I think he definitely agreed. I mean, he said that, you know, knowing you was sort of just a huge benefit to you know you trained him so much and and were able to bring a lot out of him so i think it honestly it probably did help yeah, him. yeah I, I could see it because you don't want little kid mango just shitting on you no <laughs> i can only imagine how annoying that was and then i was just good too so you just had to take it back in the days so right I, I can only imagine <laughs> uh with with um 
after that, you sort of took it some time off and you kind of chilled back. Um, did you did losing over time? I guess that just sort of just lit a fire under your ass again and and made you want to kind of come back. Um. So like, I never announced my retirement, but I just because I didn't want to like, you know, be like I'm retired and then do the armada pretty much two months later. I'm like, oh hey. So I was like, you know what, like, because like. I think Armada always took it personal that I like didn't attend certain events, but it was also like um, from 2008, 2009. I don't remember the years, but there was just a spree where like I even stopped practicing even for like pound four. I didn't practice that much and I just won like pretty, pretty easily. And I was just like, it was just hard to be motivated. So I was like, okay, here's, and I don't know. I, I might've posted this on smash Four, who fucking knows, but I remember I was like, okay, I'm going to let everyone get better and then I'll come back. And I remember, right. you know, after, uh, I saw Kevin win pound five and then I saw H box win this. And then that's when I made my comeback to Genesis. I was like, you know what? Like I want to play again. And that's why I just like, even though I don't think I was even that much better than everyone at the time, you could even argue that, but I just won solidly everything. And yeah. there's like a lot of stuff of like me traveling to NorCal in that time, me traveling to like random Midwest tournaments, even like playing dark rain and like, like meets King. There's a lot of stuff that people don't know. I like, I don't know the record. It's probably off. that doesn't even exist, but there was like, a period there where I beat Meets King like at every tournament we played. Yeah. And it was just like, it was just so free for me like to win tournaments. And like, I was beating Meets King with Falco all the time. And I just felt like, you know what? I'm just good. And uh, it's not as fun. I mean, when you're dominating that hard, it's, it's, uh, it took a toll. But I was like, I, I know I still love the game. So I'm going to wait. I see Kevin's getting good. Maybe Hbox will get good. Armada, you know, once Armada, I think, um, cause you know, after I won Genesis, I was like, okay, like, Cause you guys, I don't know. It's this wasn't really said in the doc, but like the old tournaments, like there was only like one or two tournaments a year, right? And that was it. So like, if you won that one tournament, you were just the best player. Looking back on it, it was a terrible system. <laughs> but like I, but I won Genesis, and then I was like, okay, and then I was like, all right, and then you know, um, Pound Four came after. At some point, I don't remember my timeline, but uh, it was twenty ten, I think. Yeah, yeah. So after it, it was like, okay, I'm going to go to Pound. And then I won easily. I was like, if Armada wants to rematch, you know, we could play. And then if he beats me at Pound 4, maybe I'm like, all right, fuck this guy. But he didn't even make it to me. So, you know, at the time, I'm like, okay, his Genesis run was a fluke, obviously. And I, there's probably a lot of people that felt that. Right. Obviously, now we know that Armada was obviously not a fluke. But uh, at the moment, I'm like, this guy lost to Sound Spectre and like Omsa. I'm like, I shit on, on Jeff, Jeff all the time. I'm like, this guy lost to Jeff. And. <laughs> It was kind of a dumb way, but, like, that's all we had to go off back then. It was, like, I shit on Jeff all the time. I think Jeff beat me one time. Fun fact, Jeff beat me, handed me my first loss at NorCal, Sound Spectre, and then I 6 out him later that tournament. <laughs> I'm so mad. I fucking 6 out his ass so hard. <laughs> but I remember at Pound 4, I was like, if I play Armada, we get the rematch. Cool, I'm all for it. But he didn't make it to me, and I was just like, I destroyed Hbox so easily and puffed it. I was like, and then I remembered... um. Nobody watched Grand Finals. There was like three people. I'm like, nobody cares that I'm winning. Um, I'm winning and I'm not even like that happy about it. Yeah. And like, I was not one to care. Like, I didn't care if nobody was watching. But at that point, it was like, it was like, oh, Mango Hbox Grand Finals. Nobody gave a fuck. I don't even feel that good about winning. I was like, eh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a chill pill for a while. And then I did. Yeah. And then, but, you know, I still went to tournaments, still hung out. So, like, I was still very much part of the community, but I just stopped playing for a while. So, yeah. it definitely felt at some point that it was, like, the end. But, but it has felt like the end, like, seven times. Ago, <laughs> and now I know that it's just not ending. But yeah. the, back in the day, like, uh, even in 2009, 10, when everyone switched to Brawl, like, I was going to, like, garage tournaments every weekend. Like, I always say I'm the only Melee person who, like, never quit. Yeah. Like, like yeah. everyone everyone took their little breaks. Everyone played Brawl. But, like, I've always been diehard melee even like going to garage tournaments with fucking lovage and i play lovage grand finals for fucking 60 dollars <laughs> and we would just split and then that's it i walked away with 30 dollars that was my weekend that's all, i mean that's that's i think the spirit of melee in the end is just going to you yeah, know local exactly. local tournaments and beating people that think they're better than you uh, yep, like I, uh, melee is always about uh i well, i mean i said something like that in metagame where i was just you like, did as long as one guy thinks they're good, then melee will live. I love that line. I think they're good, and if one other guy's like, "No, fuck you," then melee lives. <laughs> if there's no money, no nothing. As long as there's two guys who want to beef, because melee's always been about top two. I think if you look at any era, there's always like one guy who's good, and then one guy who's like right on his fucking ass, or like they're even, and that's just kind of how it's always been. Yeah, totally. Did you did you get excited when Leffen was coming up for that reason? Like you have another person to challenge you. 
I mean, I think Melee lives. We need our top players to be good, but we also need our Leffens, our Plups, our Zanes. Like, we need those guys. They're just as important to the story. Like, you need guys challenging the top guys or it gets stale, no matter how you look at it. So, like, when Leffen was coming, I was like, ooh, another fucking Swede. I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> and, and then, you know, he's a little fucking shit. And I was yeah. like, okay. Because our motto was always classy by the book. So, but with Leffen, I was like... We like we could beef. I'm like, this guy's a little <laughs> fuck, you know. I'm like, so I was like, when Left was coming, I was like, all right, like this guy, you know, he could be something. And then he was, you know, such a little shit. And I, I was, was a little shit. So that. it was like just shaping up that we would have two little shits in the, you know. Cause like Meets King, Pee Pee, Kevin, H Box, they're all very like sportsmen by the book, you right. know, like very polite. But like me and Leffen are we're like that, but we're down to, you know. Get, yep. get the party started Dude, it's 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 stuff. what made that moment at apex salty suite so fucking amazing like you just got up on stage and made it into the wrestling thing it was fucking yeah, awesome yeah. i always say people don't know it i'll tell it right now you can put this in the fucking extras or something but fucking um gimmer came up to me while chilling was down like 3-0 and he goes mango he's like if chilling gets 5 out, i need you to do something and I'm I'm drinking. I'm like, what, Gimmer, what the fuck do you want me to do, bro? He's like, I don't know. Just do something. Save it. <laughs> I was like, all right. I was like, fuck it. And then when I, fun story, when I went up to challenge Leffen, I had no idea what I was going to say. I had nothing scripted. And then I was like, fuck, what would be hype right now? I'm like, money match. I'm like, I'm yes. I'm like, thousand dollars. And then that was it. You can kind of <laughs> tell what I'm talking. I have no idea what I'm going to say. And then I kind of piece it together because I was fucking Gimmer just put me in the spot. I had to fucking... <laughs> Try and rescue Chillin's dumbass. So, yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Um, I, that was literally last second as possible, just by drunk Mango fucking somehow saved that. Dude, that was and that was hype because uh, it got the party started. Like, it did. That made like the front page of Reddit. Reddit. I still think Leffen gets signed by TSM only because of that. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I made Leffen who he is. <laughs> um, and no, I think that was yeah, it was a hype moment for sure. And fun fact, it was just last minute improvised as fuck. Yeah, I feel like that's the story for the whole Apex 2015. It was like last second improvised as fuck. I mean, essentially, yes. <laughs> the most piece of shit improvised thing that turned out to be gold. Even though I, I personally hate that tournament. Right, right. I know. It was sort of the beginning of the... You you coined the buster at that tournament, I think, right? Yeah, no, I, that's where I went on my sucking spree. Yeah. 15 was tough. I mean, people... 16 for me was actually pretty good. That's a yeah. I got second at like everything and I won some stuff. Yeah. But 15 was definitely my first bad year in a long time where like I was actively trying and just yeah. fucked. So uh, yeah, I hate 2015. <laughs> that was a rough year. That was a rough year for Melee generally, I think, because Leffen, I think he only came to half the tournaments because he got bodied by his Visa thing. So yeah, yeah he couldn't compete. But. Um, all right. Well, I know you got to go and play your pogo and stuff, uh, and I want to, you know, make sure my computer doesn't fucking die again. Um, but uh, I'm gonna double check and see if I got the first part of the. I'm able to salvage the first part. Um, Just um, let me know, and if not, we could do uh, tomorrow or Thursday. We can reshoot some stuff if you want. I right, dude. Appreciate it, and uh, good luck on the uh, the pogoing yeah, tonight. I'm literally gonna start right now. I want to play so bad. Slay it, dude. Slay it. Yeah, just let me know. All right, dude. Good talking to you, man. Yeah, man.